Hey, my name is Jake. Uh, if you don't know me, I teach online with CG Spectrum. I'm a concept designer and an illustrator. I wanted to uh, record some advice that covers a lot of ground. It's a little bit of a shotgun approach. So at each minute interval, you're going to find a new topic and a, a minute long discussion uh, by myself. It's not really a discussion, but what would be great is if you find a subject you like, turn it into a discussion in the, the comments wherever uh, you're viewing this, and we can learn more about that topic. So each minute it's going to turn over to a new subject. Uh, there's 10 in total. Uh, I hope you get something out of them. Um, I'm really thankful for the, the free content all these other amazing artists have been putting up online, so it, I, I want to contribute to that and give something back. And Without further ado, uh, let's get rolling. All right, minute one, ongoing projects. Uh, it's plural, you can have multiple, you can jump between them, and you probably have some already, but the idea is that if you return to or, or stick with uh, a project, whether it's a few months or a lifelong pursuit of mastering something, you're going to not only increase the, the skill and, and problem solving you have, but you're going to be able to force yourself to get more creative with whatever it is. You know, once you get under the, the surface of something and you go a little deeper, finding originality is going to take some more time. So if you give yourself some more time to develop your ideas and your techniques and everything that is wrapped up in an ongoing project, you're going to have this great place to fall back to when you, you need something uh, more secure to work on, and it has a great mystery to it. Maybe you don't even know where it's going. Minute two, I'm calling oversaturation, um, and it's this oversaturation of visual inputs. So in our information age, it's very easy to go out on all of these various media sites and you might have this compounding effect where at, at first you're looking out for inspiration but all of this overwhelming talent now more than ever is pressing down on you and actually maybe making you feel like you're belittling yourself and, and shrinking yourself down it's making the mountain seem inevitably taller as you feel like you should be able to compete with all of these individuals but remember that all of these individuals have crafted what they're good at through their own passions and you you shouldn't be directly comparing yourself to them so if your inspiration sprees of looking at other artists are not actually inspiring beware that you've broken an oversaturation threshold so minute three is references and i've found through uh the last several years that it's good to break up into uh two phases what types of references you're looking for uh, phase one reference are, is your inspiration point. It's when you have an idea or you've done thumbnails, um, before or after thumbnails, you know, what am I making? What does it feel like approximately? And, uh, you have to be careful here not to follow your reference so tight that it, you know, provides all the solutions. You still want to be creative. So it's kind of a loose gathering. And a more tightened phase two reference search is where you know what you need now. Now that you're into the project and you know what your solutions are, you might realize, I don't know how to draw X. So now you need to go and look that up in order for the believability of your project to increase. And these are the references that I think are great to copy more, more specifically. Minute four is uh, matching your commitment to your expectation. So you don't want to expect yourself to be able to achieve more than the honest commitment that you're putting in. Because if these two things don't align, you end up feeling like crap, like you, you're not making good enough progress. The, the goal should be to make progress in a realistic factor to how committed you are. So for example, if you only have uh, enough time to part-time study, or your drawing habits are very spotty, Maybe you, you shouldn't expect yourself to progress at a rate that would exceed what's realistic for that amount of time and energy that you're putting in. If you're able to study full time and, and really give it your all, your expectations can go up because the, the results are probably going to go up and match them. So keep a really healthy eye on matching commitment to your own expectations. 
So minute five is isolating skills, uh, and essentially you're just trimming out all of the things that are in the way so that you're able to focus on one thing that you, you know you need to get better at. Whether someone uh, like a, a mentor or a colleague has pointed it out or you, you've been hiding from it, um, just know that it might not be flashy in the meantime to isolate that skill and repetitively work on it. So if you need some help with uh, posing, for example, you you should probably lay off designing original uh, characters or doing it from imagination. Then just study posing from from photographs and from life until you're actually really comfortable with it. And if you follow through with that and you make some good progress, it's going to seamlessly blend right back into your normal practices and you can confidently feel like through isolation, you've jumped over that hurdle. Minute six is belief in progress. So we want to focus on progress over results, and any progress is far superior to never having tried. So even on those days where where things just don't click and you feel like you, you actually didn't learn anything, you'll pretty often look back on what you did a day or two later and you will have made progress. There will be one drawing or one part of your painting that, you know, was a little hurdle that you got over and there's something there to be proud of. So when you're going through that rough patch, remember that the, the progress that you're building towards in the big picture is far more important because you, you could have squandered that time with something you care much less about, you know, some momentary fixation, but you are working your dedication and working through these problems. Minute seven is put practice first. So if, if you're going to be doing an endeavor that requires some serious effort and it's important to you, you might want to just prioritize it by, by putting it before everything else. Uh, it's, it's really simple. So you, you might be required to become more of a morning person. But for example, I would cafe sketch for a session before I would go to work. And that's going to allow me to be much more inspired and relaxed throughout the day. Like I'll, I'll feel more accomplished because I'm not putting it on myself to be creative and inspired in the evening time when you're actually naturally getting tired, right? Uh, all these other things in life can get in the way then. So before your chores and your emails, put this first. And it's going to really propel you once you get into a rhythm. You might even want to wake up early the next day. Minute eight is momentary inspiration. There's a lot of inspiration topics, but this is about that little moment when you see or hear or think something that you feel is noteworthy. And the idea is to just simply, you know, do something about it that's realistic for the time you have. So if you have a sketchbook, you might want to write a note. You might want to do a little thumbnail doodle. You might want to grab a scrap piece of paper um, that you have on your desk and put that idea down. And even if you never finish it, what you've actually done is, is very successfully communicated a, a feeling or a vision you had. And it's actually, in the long run, it's shaping the, the subjects you're passionate about and the feelings that you do have. So you're, you're communicating your inner instinct, you're putting it down on paper so you have the idea later, and it's a wonderful practice. The minute nine is session goals. So when, when you have a session uh, coming up, I think the, the important thing to do is to plan for what that goal is gonna be before you sit down. So before this block of time that you've set out, maybe on your way there, um, maybe you can think about it the night before, but you want to know what you're going to obtain at the end of that session to give you not only focus, whether it's going to be uh, to improve your line work, to work at some new content, a brand new challenge, or work on yesterday's successes and build on them, but you're also going to come away with using that time appropriately and not spending the time of that session deliberating on what to make, having the, the blank page syndrome. So you're going to come away with a greater sense of accomplishment and a better use of your time. 
Minute 10 is consecutive sessions. Learning through repetition doesn't really need an explanation, but if you're aware here of how many sessions is ideal for whatever your, your common goals and themes are, then that's great, and it's something to be aware of. So we want to take what we learned last time, identifying the, the problems we faced and noticing the progress we made, and we want to, in this session, build upon that and correct some of those problems and make even more progress. So if you do too few sessions in repetition, you know, extremely different uh, challenges, you might scatter your learning and it might not sink in quite deep enough. And the, the flip side is doing too many obviously leads to complacency, drawing the same thing, leads to bad habits and you're learning less. So find a sweet spot and stick with a, at least a handful of similar sessions. All right, that finishes everything up. I do recognize that everybody learns things in different orders and is at different skill levels and is dealing with different creative problems, but I do hope at least something from here can help you either in your immediate practice or in an upcoming project. I'd love uh, discussions to start based on these topics, and please send me feedback on this type of tutorial video as uh, I hope to incorporate that into future videos. So thanks very much.